Okay, today I have kind of a treat for you. I am doing Marjorie Taylor Green, a hand rendered chart. We do not know her birth time, so and I went looking for it today, thinking maybe I can get around it through numerology or Indian astrology, because sometimes they have information that we don't have. But I think solidly she's not available for uh, a time. So the traditional method for birth time when we don't have one is to use a noon birth time. Every two hours, it changes significantly enough between our moon and sun that it does have to be uh, adjusted for that. But in this case, we do not do that. So this is called a solar chart. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to share the screen. And so I did a hand rendered, but first of all, we're just gonna start out with the tarot cards, okay? And I am using the Tarot de Saint Croix by Lisa de Saint Croix. Okay. And I'm really enjoying this deck for a lot of reasons because it really does speak of a cross cultural truth that we all live within. And this one starts out as the Queen of Swords as the foundation. I am using four cards to represent and respect the Hawaiian culture, four and four or 44, very important here. And because I'm in Hawaii and I believe so much in, you know, just the, the lore and the mythology and, and maybe even my part in it, interestingly enough, that I choose to honor that. And I've debated between using these cards and my, uh, Hawaiian mana deck, but I, I decided my mana deck was too kind for this particular person. So not that the cards make any difference, but this card, this deck is a little bit more, shall we say, tricky that way, right? It demonstrates a level of trickiness that some of these characters that we've been dealing with as of these last so many years in politics can seem to heavily provide us. So she gets the Queen of Swords as her foundation, meaning that she comes in wearing her helm of, shall we say, trickery, uh, carrying her words as a way to uh, create a, my sinus is still itch from, oh, COVID, it's just, I'm so over COVID. I've just got to tell you, I'm so over it. At any rate, so you, you see this Queen of Swords and she's this person who, is um full of stories right all these red lines all these all these passionate lines that she's so easily able to deliver to us and notice that is she's wearing a a, a a bodice top that her breasts in that in this bodice top look flat and i would say that that's an indication that she's not a mother and never has been that she doesn't really know how to relate in a more, shall we say, liquidy, watery way to, she's not receptive. It's not, she's not, she's not necessarily in touch with her moon, if you will, her receptive side. She's more satirian, um, authority, uh, liking to tell us how the cow munches the cabbage and, and it's religious authority. It's, it's Puritan authority. I bring forward as a warrior, this truth about life and you're going to, you're going to swallow my stories. And I got to admit, I, I watch her because it's important to me to, when I'm going to do a reading, I really want to understand who I'm reading. I don't really just want to bring a reading that says, this is what I think. Cause it doesn't matter what I think, honestly, it doesn't. It's it, this is about, us as a human race and and the things that we as people at this time are encountering and the truths that we have asked to encounter and so we get interestingly enough people like marjorie taylor green and you'll notice in the background i have people wearing masks and you might be asking yourself why i might be having this be my backdrop well i am community where sometimes we just need to cover our mouths and watch what we say okay that would be one reason I might be making a note of this the other thing I might be saying which is equally important is you'll notice the male is on my left side and the female is on my right side 
and actually it's just the opposite they're 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 i'm getting it wrong because i dyslexic like but anyway and one is one is the male energy that is just kind of keeps us logical clear the other is a female energy that you know helps us to have more sense of connection belonging feminine well we're kind of in a period of time where we're dealing heavily with a lot of male energy or shall i say kind of controlling energy now that doesn't mean men are controlling as a rule they can be because they're taught that they're an authority over women but doesn't always mean that and I, I know my husband has been going through the school of hard knocks with me for over 20 years debating this very fact because i i don't view myself as male or female i view myself as human and i view my words my my thoughts my belonging to society as a part of a bigger gear that turns and it's you know whether what i have to say has value or not you know is is sometimes a divine moment versus not you know and so you you do kind of want to listen for those divine moments because they, they can surprise us but in her case where she's just this really hardcore energy right and we're seeing a lot of that and what does she get as a past card she gets a card that shows that she's sitting at the table with us having having this heartfelt meal right or, or you know this fantasy conversation with all of these fantasy characters and one of them you might notice is a troll her sitting at the head of the table with a bowl something functional for herself and the food kind of being in her command so she's sort of dishing it out right she's saying this is what's here and you can have this and you can have that her position of authority within the family and how it is that she's able to trick us. And in some ways it is because as a political person, she holds purse strings, financial purse strings that affect the family. And and quite frankly, again, that kind of that red troll energy, she she has some ability to to trick us. And it's up to us to recognize the trickery or not. So in a past position, she's had a lot of trouble and you can see this little girl pouring a rainbow looking for ways to survive and you can see that directly across from this troll-like energy is more ethnic energy for which marjorie taylor green i would suspect doesn't necessarily recognize nor does she respect that means not just by color but also by your choices sexually if you're gay transgender whatnot she's uh she's got an opinion that says you don't have rights and and she does she's serving the food okay so this card is saying a lot here and it, it it's, it's it's a lot worth noting given that she views herself as this warrior and speaker for us the people you know is she really the speaker or is she somebody right now with a big mouth and needs to cover it yeah you know all questions this is for entertainment purposes only i want to say I, I in no way have interviewed her directly. I am providing this as a service to mankind to help us better understand the politics we are experiencing today, which is crazy. We shouldn't still be talking about somebody who was a president two and a, uh, plus years ago. I mean, it's it, it's crazy, okay? And then you get this 10 of cups, this, this toasting, you know, where Presently, she with other Republicans that are hardcore believers that stop the steal are toasting, believing that in some ways they have something brilliant to bring forward and deal with humanity, that they know what's best for us and, and victory, you know, uh, Roe versus Wade, that they are bringing forth this, this toasting of morality, this, this, this completion cycle, celebrating this this star of a moment where you know it's like christmas to them where they've gotten what they were really after what they were seeking which is to be in charge and to to hold to hold charge over over the very many branches of life and the light itself that it produces which is really sad. I mean, who, who is she to decide that? You know, who are a lot of these people? And again, notice that red energy and that red liquidy, toxicy 
kind of drink that they're drinking, right? They're drinking the Kool-Aid, if you will. And it, it it isn't serving any of them any good purposes. All of them are in trouble right now, I think. But this is about Marjorie Taylor Greene. And then she gets the seven of pentacles in a future. So what is this saying in summation? Well, it's saying that for her largely, this is about theft of, of earth and the money. And you notice that she's kind of in a tiger wrap, you know, she's got a tiger hood on or a leopard hood, you know, where she's out there grabbing the coins for herself from out of the sky. And, you know, and I think that we've been witnessing something to that effect where her campaign issues and she's in fi financial trouble over campaign financial laws. I don't really know what all because I'm not I'm not really political. I mean, this is why I've I've been hesitant to really jump in and I've been invited to podcasts with bigger with bigger podcasters that that do political readings, but I just don't feel it's my wheelhouse and I feel like if I don't uh this um if I don't kind of stay true to myself, I don't really grow into who I'm meant to become. So I want to say that that's all part of my theory and why I do charts as I do them. Okay, so I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to go in and I'm going to share screen again and I'm going to grab Marjorie Taylor Greens, as you can see here, hand rendered chart. And what does her chart tell me right off the bat? Well, just her date of birth. Okay, she was born May the 27th in 1974. We don't know her birth time, so we have to just assume some things but we do know enough that I can tell you a good deal about her and we can get pretty darn close so one of the things that her chart says right away is that she suffers from borderline personality disorder okay she 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 has her toys she sits the at, sits at the head of the table it's all for her it she she fails to invite others to eat okay she eats you don't Okay, and 27, it, and where does she get what she eats from you and I, humanity, the humanitarian cause? She has some understanding that by getting involved, a number two, through partnership, through a, through a process of collaboration, if you will, with one other person, that she's able to steal, effectively steal from humanity, okay? So these are just facts about her birth time, we are birth date we don't have any trouble i don't have trouble making like very clear statements on and then she's born in 1974 and i wrote down a 10 a 14 and a 6 which is going to be a 1 a 5 a 6 that is going to be 1 5 a 12 so 1 2 3 she's come to take from us and hang on to for herself in the name of she sees what's best for us as humans or family. Now, this is a hand rendered chart, as I've said. Now, I'm going to do the chain of dispositors because it's actually very interesting, her chain of dispositors. And what is a chain of dispositors? Well, it's it's how your planets prioritize. OK, they they they. Believe it or not, certain planets in your chart are more important for a reading than others. So we would emphasize in places where this is the case, where in her case, where she starts out, her chart is ruled by Venus. Okay. So what she sees is beautiful. And I'm going to tell you, I think the girl's brilliant in a way, right? She's very, very smart. And when she talks, she's semi convincing in ways I have trouble. I have to tell myself, okay, when she talks, I got to think through what she's saying, because I don't know if I believe her or not. I have to think about it, right? Because I always want to be fair with whomever I'm dealing with in life. And you can see that I've written down Venus in Gemini. And for her, it's about karma and fate. And it moves on over into Mars, where that is where her super ID is. That's how she communicates. And you can see underneath it with authority. It's her career. She tells us things that she finds attractive or is attracted to talk about and asserts it in some super id ways, like 
on fire, right? And, you know, I'm going to bring it to you. I'm going to tell you how it is and you, you're going to see what I mean. And in some ways that's very effective. And so what it then occurs is that it appears like she's being receptive to us as very motherly, like, like that one thing that she is not, she is not able to be a, physically a mother. Okay. So how does she deal with that? Well, she projects that she's motherly. Okay. As and we all crave to be to be parented. We crave to have our mother. We crave to have our father. This is in part why this is working. I can I, just doing this chain of dispositors helps me see better what it is. And so, and it's how she sees herself as a whole. That she sees herself as this woman who's a mother and who means well. And you can see underneath it, Pluto. Actually, that's that's not Pluto. That's Mercury. How she thinks. Okay, she she sees herself as a mother. She sees herself as receptive. She sees herself as as open and willing to be be the kindness that she seeks. But there's a problem, and that is her Pluto, uh, um, her Pluto, Uranus, conjunct. It says, "Yeah, I'm um, really here." shockingly bringing up some darker truths and I'm spreading those truths, those stories like lies. So you see it pointing to Neptune and Jupiter, expanding those lies. I'm all about it. Now, who am I? Well, I'm probably somebody with a lot of problems with racial identity. I'm probably white and I'm probably pretty sure that if I don't fight for my whiteness right now, that something bad is going to happen and it and we're going to lose control. And as a warrior, she's unwilling to lose control. She's unwilling to, to give up that passionate energy. This is why she's so easy in some ways to buy and why she's on TV all the time. I mean, it's amazing that this is a presidency that she's fighting for and stop the steal that has been dead and gone for almost two years. Now, where is the common sense here, right? I mean, it, it, there wasn't a stolen election. I mean, I I have my own misgivings about our election process. I don't like Biden. I don't like the way we go out and we shop for a president. I don't like the divisiveness of politics at all. I don't like any of it. My husband worked for the federal government for his entire career and uh trust me on this th these are good girl scouts and boy scouts these these aren't people who are <clears throat> acting in dishonest ways that you've been told we we have i mean my husband's so honest he doesn't take pins out of his desk and bring them home by accident even if he's working from home he just buys pins for home okay he doesn't work for the federal government anymore and thank god because for us, it got to be really hard to put up with this constant emotionally degrading garbage. Okay. So, but right now I'm focusing on where is this woman coming from? What is she trying? What is her bill of goods? Okay. What is she selling you and I? Well, my opinion is that she's been selling us this new bangle government. Okay. This, this Aries Venus Thing where she wants to come in and say to, to you and I, I have a new idea about what government looks like. And I'm here to tell you, I'm going to push that real hard and, and nothing wrong with that. But what's her shadow? Her shadow is her ability to expand, her ability to really understand what expansion is. She functions in some kind of delusion and loss in her Jupiter in the 12th house in Pisces. And what is it that she's selling well she's selling you details she's selling you the truth she's selling you that she's your partner wants to bring to bear this dark energy that she just knows you want to hear she understands you want to understand her and and it's pluto conjunct uranus both retrograde so pluto going you know having the details where she's going over the hidden details and shockingly has information both retrograde now does she have extra information that the rest of us don't have i really don't know but i doubt it i mean i don't think that you can be 
this person and be representing what's best for us at this time. And the reason I say that is you look at fourth house where she has Saturn and she has uh, Mars. It's saying in her house of mother history, uh, her mythology, her ancestry, that she's very strict. She's very very adamant about what she knows she's very fatherly you know i you know i know this i know that i'm in control i use this information and control to control you the masses and i do so with a air of superiority and how i do this is i use my mars my my male super id that's on fire and i tell you how it's done where you notice that that is squaring her Venus saying what she finds beautiful versus how she speaks are just not necessarily true. And, and, and take that into account because then you walk up into the seventh house where you have an, an additional square that's in the, uh, the Pluto, uh, acquire uh, Pluto, excuse me, um, Uranus conjunction. It is a focal point of the T square where she tells these shocking stories, meaning that it's very possible because this is a solar chart, but these bigger planets are really where they belong. So they, they matter. They really speak. It's a focal point of a T square, which means she is somebody who definitely is doing what she does with some amount of knowing now the question is is she at uh, 12 a.m or maybe she's more of a nighttime birth and i would suspect honestly that she's more of a nighttime birth uh i don't know why i feel that and i might play with the numbers and see what i get for a 6 or a 7 p.m and even an 8 p.m kind of occurs to me as well um maybe even a 9 p.m birth because there's just something about her that strikes me as dark and darker than this chart really allows me to see and understand. Now, notice that she has Neptune, and this again is going to be solid because it's a solar chart. So really, I'm focusing on the outer planets to bring you the, the story. And I'm not going to focus so much on the sun and the moon because that's really where our that time difference is going to show. Uh, because the other planets move a lot slower. They, they, they're sitting there for at least long enough to that that if you're getting it halfway through the day, you're nailing it. So keep in mind, the only two planets that really may not be correct are the sun and the moon. And because that's the case, it's we can see an awful lot. So you have Neptune in Sagittarius where she's about bringing this something to do with the overall well-being of the world, large and small, near and far, that she views as as kind of humanity's help you know like she sees herself as being this this diffused beautiful soul this this angel of darkness bringing forward this information and she's confused she's at a loss again you're talking squares with your pluto square or pluto sextile uh neptune where she, th this is a lot of focal points, a lot of squaring going on all over the chart. And it's saying, yeah, she, she's very much not telling the truth. And she may not know how to tell the truth. That the, the, the Neptune part of it really makes for her telling the truth maybe a difficult job as her chain of dispositors shows. And again, as I say, the chain of dispositors really more shows us how we think and do. So the chain of dispositors is solid. That that I, I'm not even gonna worry about. That is that is the chain of dispositors and it is a solid fact. So you can count on it. So the, so the bigger part of this reading is correct. There's gonna be little details, the sun and the moon that I am not gonna be able to nail. And I promise you, the minute I have her birth time, I am going to fly back on here and I'm going to do a numerology, astrology, tarot card reading because the girlfriend, I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is, but I feel really troubled by the fact that this white woman who's, you know, blonde like me, mouthing off and spouting things that are just, that just can't be true, that aren't true. And for instance, you know, that, that this, this election was stolen. Well, 
you can see in the fourth house in Cancer where for her, maybe she does feel like the authority in her in her childhood was such that she really doesn't trust it. And so I would suspect that she has troubles with authority overall and is there to gain control and to do something about what she feels is the injustices. But again, it's projective. It isn't receptive. And the girlfriend's got borderline personality disorder all over the place. Okay. She just does. And, and it's, and she's probably got antisocial disorder. Thus, you know, who does she hang with? Matt Gates, who is, you know, be an, an accused potential p pedophile. And again, for entertainment purposes only, I, I, I haven't done Matt Gates. I maybe will do Matt Gates. I just don't know because I, these people sort of drain me in a way, you know, it's, it's hard to feel good about politicians who make the kind of money they make and for life and, and, and treat us like dogs. Right. And up to, and including how they're dealing with this pandemic where right now it's, it's in a surge. I've had it for four weeks. I'm just now getting over it now. Like everybody seems like in my family has it everywhere. It's like, it's just like, it's suddenly sprouting up everywhere. And I think this is true for everybody and it's affecting our stomachs or got fevers, headaches that don't go away. I got a, I got a blood, like a, like a, a hematoma in my toe which was really weird underneath my toenail you know and it popped and it was like painful it was really bizarre you know so it kind of scared me it made me realize that yeah even it even affects our blood and it causes us to have these little these little blood clots that rupture you know and thank god mine just was a little toe hematoma you know a little pain but nothing that came to anything and it's all taken care of now it's gone and thank god and i had to cut it all out because it was hurting me but you know this is where we're at, okay? And what does somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene have to do with that? Well, in a way, they represent that our oxygen is wrong, that they're stealing our oxygen. How are they stealing our oxygen? Well, they're they're legislating right now what we can do to protect ourselves or not. You know, should we get vaccinated? Do we wear masks? Do we have rights? Do we not have rights? I don't even know what the answers are, folks. I don't know, and I'm not going to pretend like I need to even know. I just know that right now, where I'm really at at this point, is I'm back to, I'm not going into the stores again. My husband's going to have to go back to doing all the grocery shopping, which is fine. He's had the vaccines. He wears a mask. He's like Mr. Clean and is constantly washing his hands and using his sanitizer, hand sanitizer. So, you know, he's he's a good choice for this. But for, you know, somebody like myself, who I'm dealing with stage four cancer, I, I don't stand a chance. I just don't. And I go into public, even here in Hawaii, where wearing a mask is, is quite a popular feature in the, for the most part, all for all the locals, because a lot of them have diabetes and have weight issues and who knows what all. And so they're completely paying attention. And, you know, we have a small island hospital, not enough room for the number of people who can, are going to need help. So we, you know, we're a little bit more mindful of COVID here on the island. But in Kona, now, mind you, that is the tourist location. And in Kona is where Costco is. That it's not so nice there. And you go in and I see people all the time acting like I am so stupid for having on a mask. And I find it amazing. I have no hair. They should be seen really easily. I have no eyelashes. I have no eyebrows. That something on my body is just not quite functioning right. And I need the extra support. But no, they, you know, they'll they'll look at me, and go, hey, hey, hey. you know, and it's like I'm just amazed <clears throat> that anybody would be so blind by reality that they don't see that maybe not everybody wears a mask for the same reason <clears throat> and and maybe it doesn't need to be politicized maybe this isn't a political event maybe it is a virus mind you a virus that we need to deal with and you know we're in times that are just kind of crazy now with that i am going to conclude this so it doesn't just go on and on and on and i'm not really providing you much um but I'm going to be bringing you in my next podcast, the eclipses and how they affect us because it's fascinating. And we are going to be under the effects of a <clears throat> Scorpio uh, uh, Taurus, second, eighth house theme uh, of exposure and uh, truth and continued, continued pain. Okay. Continued infection. 
until 2023. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and conclude this. I would like for you to hit the uh, like, share, and subscribe, if you would, please, and leave comments, because I don't grow without that. And please do um, keep in mind, uh, your comments need to be respectful. This isn't to cause harm to anyone, and particularly Marjorie Taylor Greene. These are just to bring our facts to the fore so we better understand what's happening to us in our times. And with that, I'm so grateful you joined me here today. Thank you so much.